Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, it has been a while since we watched Dr. Zucker Nike. Here is a brand new video about a Sikh girl that accepted Islam. The Sikh religion is something that I would like to dive deeper into. I'm a little bit biased here. I do like Sikhis. Most of the taxi drivers in Australia back in the day used to be Sikhis. I had great talks with those people and we agree upon that there is one God. Their perception of one God is a bit different and I would like to claim, even though I'm pretty ignorant on the subject, that they seem to be a little bit more perennialist, if you will, because they are claiming is that the truth is found in different religions, of course, but the ultimate, the fullness of the truth is found within Sikhism. I'm very curious to find out why this Sikhi girl here will convert to Islam. With no further ado, let's have a look. Can we have the next question? Man, how Thank full you. those presentations are. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Preet. I'm a non-Muslim. I'm of a Sikh religion. And um, I came across Islam like a year and a plus back to That's a the audience outside the of the auditorium. University, and wow. he introduced Islam to me. He gave me a couple of books to read because I used to look at the way he was practicing Islam. He used to pray and his talks, the way he used to talk to me. And then after some time, uh, I used to ask him a lot of questions. So he told me, why don't you read the Quran in the translated version? Sure. So that's what I did. So uh, nice. I was pretty convinced after I read the Quran wow, that so Allah is the only true God. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the only, is the last messenger. So, she took the shahada right there. That's it. It's after done. some time, my parents came to know about it. And they are very religious. So, they are very unhappy that I was um, diverting into another religion. Of course, if you look into Sikhism, it came out of India during the occupation, if you will, of the Islamic Empire. So, Guru Nanak, I believe, is the main figure of Sikhism and he got inspired by Islam, but at the same time, of course, inspired by Hinduism as well. And then he goes out by himself before converting to Islam almost to have his own spiritual journey. And then he returns from his epic journey and I'm paraphrasing here he claims there is no Muslim and there is no Hindu there is only a Sikhi a Sikhi meaning somebody that is learning a student of knowledge so to speak ultimately he dissolves those conceptualizations of organized religion and he claims that once you left this physical there is no label of a Muslim a Christian a Hindu or whatnot therefore there is only one path to God but nevertheless if you look at it critically Yes, it does stem out of India during the Muslim occupation and therefore Sikh haters, if you will, Sikh critiques will of course claim that Sikhism is a mixture of Hinduism and Islam. And to be totally honest, if you look at it, even I as a layman have to admit that it truly appears that way. So they decided to take me to the temple to renew my faith. Despite the fact that I was um, not very happy, I could not object them because they would scold and like raise their voice and I didn't want to fight with them. So I just agreed, but I did not do it from my heart. I just did it to make them happy, to please them, to avoid any argument and all that. Uh, we have to please God so ultimately, not I our parents. I want to eh? ask you for an advice. What do I do? How am I supposed to convince my parents? How am I supposed to tell them that I believe this is the religion for me at least? You just accept it. You get married, and that's it. That's how I see it. Sister asked the question that she had been studying Islam since the past one and a half year, and she liked the teaching, she read the Quran, she got convinced that there's one God and Prophet Muhammad is a messenger. And later on, when the parents came to know, they took her back to the temple, and though she unwillingly had to obey the parents, she's asking, How can I convince my parents? There you is a can't. book I've given, and there's a book of mine concept of God in major world religions. Here what I spoke was only of four religions. Hinduism, Judaism, Christianity and Islam. If you see my full lecture, it even includes Sikhism. Sikhism. Sikhism, sister, is a religion which came towards the end of the 15th century. 
in the land of Punjab. It was found by Guru Nanak Sahib. Mm -hmm. And what the scholars say, it's an amalgamation of many of the teachings from Hinduism and Islam. And it's the religion of 10 Gurus. And if you read the concept of God in Sikhism, if you read the text, not the practice. The text, if you read Guru Granth Sahib, if you read the first chapter, Adi Granth, the first verse is known as Japuji. It says that he is true. He is not begotten. And he is most powerful. Yes. Free from all wants. Yes. And has power over all things. And there is nothing like him. So this of Japuji matches very closely with Surah Ikhlas, which I said. So theoretically, Sikhism definition of Almighty God is quite similar to definition of Quran Surah Ikhlas. That's the reason what Sikhs believe. They believe in the... Absolutely. If we look into quotes of Guru Nanak, we will see that he even said Allah. So Guru Nanak called God Allah. Here is a quote where he says, Allah is ineffable. He's instructable. He is the all-powerful creator, the merciful. The whole world is transitory and the merciful alone is permanent. Only he is eternal for he is not subject to any destiny. So in this quote, clearly you can see that this is Islamically inspired, the very least, if not completely copied from Islam. He talks about the merciful, Ar-Rahman, of course. This is absolutely Islamic. I give two names, Omkara, which has a manifest form, and Ek Omkara. And there are various attributes given to Almighty God in Sikhism. They call Almighty God as Sahib, which means Lord. They also call him as Rahim merciful, they call him as Kareem, beneficent, they call him as Vahe Guru, one true God. And yeah. Sikhism is against idol worship. It's against Autarvada, Almighty God taking forms. It's even against idol worship. So the teachings of as far as concept of God is concerned, theoretically is quite similar. Practically, they do deviate here and there a little bit. But otherwise, as far as concept of God is concerned, it is quite similar. What my advice to you would be, you can give the translation of the Quran even to your mother and father. And ask them to read. And tell them that, can you point out something which is not good? Or something which disagrees? So you have to be patient. And you have to tell them. And you have to do the duty of a true believer. First, I would like to know, that you did say that you read the Quran and you did also say that you believe in one God but you never said whether you accept Islam or not but by believing there is one God believing idol worship is wrong believing in Prophet Muhammad you do enter into the fold but whether you did accept or not I am not aware I would like to ask you sister that would you like to accept Islam? Yes I would like to but at this moment I would want to think like want to know how am I supposed to Convince my parents first. You cannot because convince I them. Want to do something like they you are have to do what you have to do, and then your parents will react the way that your parents will react. Out of the That's it. And I told Nothing my parents you can do. that if I'm going to take any step, I will inform you. You will be informed before I take any step. Mm. That's right. So, what I would request you, as I told you, that you can give my DVDs to your parents. There are various DVDs. And I know that so much of misconception there about Islam that most of the non-Muslim would get afraid. Oh, you're becoming a Muslim. That means you're becoming a terrorist. No, you're going to follow a religion of terrorists. You're going to violence. In fact, I always recommend that anyone who becomes a Muslim, especially the youngsters, first thing I tell them that there should be a difference between your behavior, what you did before accepting Islam and after accepting Islam. And as my son Farik, he told in his lecture, that paradise lies beneath the feet of your mother. Even for you, sister, your paradise, even if your mother is a non-Muslim, paradise is there beneath the feet of your mother. Whether your mother goes to That's paradise or not, right? You understand, na? Because you have to love your mother, you have to respect your mother, that does not mean that if you become a Muslim, if you become, you have to disrespect your mother. So when your parents see the change, that fine, I used to request my daughter to do small things she never used to do. Now she's helping me, she's dabbing me, she's following my instructions. So you have to see that once you become a Muslim, there has to be a marked difference between your behavior, what was earlier and what was now. 
If previously you were a good daughter, now you have to be a better daughter. And when they ask you why, you say this is the teaching of the Quran, this is the teaching of the Prophet. So once they find a marked difference in your behavior, in your kindness, in your obedience, if you are following 50%, try and follow 99.9 or 100%. If you are following 90%, try and follow 100%. Only those things, what they tell you, which goes against the teaching of the Quran and teaching of Prophet Muhammad's peace be upon him, those are the only things you should abstain from. Besides that, all what she tells you, even though you may not like it, you should do. So there should be a marked difference. For example, they may tell you, okay, wear clothes which are blue, and blue is not a favorite color. So if blue is not a favorite color, if your mother likes it, wear it. So she gets happy. So you have to look after her, you have to care for her more, so that they should be forced to ask, how come this change is there? So once they... So make a positive change, basically. ask you how the change is, because these are the teachings of the Quran. And that's what my son told in his lecture, what I gave a gist. So if this is their sister, at the same time, you have to try and remove the misconception. I've written a book on the most common questions asked by non-Muslims. That book, I think it will be available outside. I would request the volunteers to give a copy to her. And these normally try and clarify the misconception what the media has spread about Islam. So if you give that book to read to your mother and father, maybe they will understand part of it, if not completely, and give the translation. And what I would say that never disrespect your parents. Even if they do things which are wrong, you as a daughter should not disrespect. As the Quran says, you can't say oof to them also. All right. But same time, only those things what they tell you which is against Allah and His Rasul, these two things, is the only time you can disagree but politely. All the other things you go out of the way to convince them and to be good to them, be kind to them, there should be a marked difference. And then inshallah, they will be happy. Initially, they would feel a bit sad because, but natural, they would think that you're going into a wrong religion. But later on, because of a behavior, they'll get convinced, and you never know, you may be the zariya for the Jannah. Like your mother, paradise lies beneath her feet, maybe you may be the zariya, you may be the path which will lead your parents to paradise. Hope that answers the question, sister. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. Kind of cute, I have to say. Women, daughters in general, are much more careful when it comes down to decision making because they are very, very bound to their families. Men, on the other hand, they go out, create their own families, and they get a bit detached of their parents. It is just normal biology. This is how things are. Women in general tend to be more agreeable as well. They don't want to get into arguments, they don't want to disagree. And of course, especially not with their parents. But ultimately, the most important thing is the truth. So if you see the truth, then you will have to walk the path of truth, no matter what anybody says. And then it really boils down to anybody. Even if you look into the Bible, Jesus says, if you want to be perfect, leave your parents and follow me. What does it mean? Jesus, as the messenger of God, says to his disciples, if you want to be perfect, then follow me. He clearly displays what regular people have to do. But when it comes down to perfection, you really want to follow the truth. Then follow the messenger, of course. And it does not matter what your parents, what your friends say. This is something that she will have to learn. But moreover, in this instance, I would recommend, of course, finding a Muslim husband. This would be much easier for her as well because she would come under the guidance of the husband. This husband then could lead her to the right path and moreover, he could discuss on her behalf with her parents firmly and respectfully. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.